G'day guys, we've got a trigonometric identity proof today where we're asked to prove that the cis of alpha plus beta is equal to the cis of alpha times the cis of beta using another trigonometric identity which is that the cis of theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so using this we have to prove this. Okay, so the beginning what we're going to do is we're going to let alpha plus beta equal this uh, theta term in this particular trigonometric identity. So we're going to say let theta equal alpha plus beta. So because of this what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that into here. So we can say therefore cis of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha plus beta plus i times the sine of alpha plus beta. Great. So from here guys what we're going to do is we've got to use our angle sum and angle difference formulas for our, or rather than formulas it's called trigonometric identities where we've got the cosine of a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b and we also have the sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Cool, so these two trigonometric identities, you kind of should know these off the top of your head. And this is just because you use these a lot when you're doing any kind of uh, proofs involving trigonometric functions. So I would try and commit these to memory here, guys. So what we're going to do from here is this is where the proof gets fairly laborious. So I'm going to make it right over the other side so we have enough space. So the cos of alpha plus beta, we're going to use this identity obviously, is going to equal the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. And then we're going to add i times, then we're going to use the second one, the sine of alpha times the cos of beta plus the cos of alpha times the sine of beta. Okay, as you can see, relatively laborious. Now, in the next part, what we have to do is we literally are just going to multiply out that second bracket. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to group our like terms. So when I say group them, these leading uh, cosines here, cos of alpha and cos of alpha are the same. And we have sine of alpha and sine of alpha there, which is the same. So we're going to group those. Okay, great. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to factorize the first two by the cosine of alpha. So let's go about doing that. Okay, now in this part, what we're going to do now, this is where the sort of the proof is made or break, made or, you know, lost, I guess, in this sort of section here is, and it all comes down to this sign here. Now, why it all comes down to this is because I'm going to say that this is like having a negative one coefficient out the front, and we know, well, hopefully we know, that i squared is equal to negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that negative sign with a plus i squared sine of the of alpha sine of beta plus i 
sine of alpha cos of beta. Cool, so now what I can do is I can factorize this back part by i and sine of alpha. So I'm going to go, this is equal to cosine of alpha. Great, and now what you can see is we can factorize by this common factor in the brackets here, because it's on common to both sides. So I'm going to take that out the front, and I have cos of beta plus i sine of beta, and that's multiplied by the cos of alpha plus i sine of alpha, which guys is equal to this here is the cis of beta times this here is the cis of alpha. So we could say, we can just to make it look like the one we have in our question, we can then say that this is equal to, which is equal to the right hand side. Okay, so there you have it, there is our proof guys. So the long and the short of it is to get through this proof, first of all, you need to have these under control. You need to be able to whip these out when you have these angle sum and angle difference formulas. But then the sort of the pothole, which I think a lot of people would fall into is if you're not familiar with proofs like this, is ensuring that that negative becomes this here. Because if you don't get that, then you can't factorize by that I here. So if you don't get that equaling that, you won't get that and then you won't be able to factorize at the end and then you won't get your answer. So here yeah, there's a few potholes, but you know if you can navigate them, it's not a very complicated question. You just go through the motions after a while. So I would recommend practicing a few of these different proofs, but I hope the video helped guys. If it did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time and uh, until next time, just keep enjoying your maths.